Ross, sauce it up. I ain't mad black with a spinning. Exclusion in my city, yeah, the fans got me winning. Top of 130, hit a pedal and a kick it. And mess some short turns, but I turn it and I drift it. So what? I might have some heavy days, but fuck love. Had to hide a rack to wait. It's stage tough. Yeah, my money have a nade. I'm fast up. I ain't got nothing to say. So what? I might have some heavy days, but fuck love. Had to hide a rack to wait. What's up guys, I'm Landon from Shoe Wear, and today we're checking out the Nike Air Zoom GT Run in the Armory Slate colorway. So first, thank you guys for stopping by to check us out. Feel free to drop a follow or subscribe wherever you're watching and give this video a like. We would greatly appreciate that. But starting off with the box and the price, this was the second shoe to release in that Nike Greater Than series. So that's going to be what the GT in the title stands for. So all three of the boxes kind of follow the same idea. These are going to have that wavy line kind of running through the middle of the circle there. So the jump did have an arrow going up and the cut had like a jagged arrow kind of placed in that same spot so you know a simple look but I still thought it was clean as for pricing these did fall in the middle of the other two GT models at 175 so I know the jumps were you know the most expensive at 180 the cuts were the cheapest at 170 so if you want to call that cheap but in general these are going to fall on the more pricey side of the scale but you know still not too bad So checking out the appearance and the design for these shoes, like I said, this is the Armory Slate colorway for this GT Run model. So I think the gray and the green combo looks pretty nice. And you know, this shoe does feel a little bit higher off the ground just due to that thicker midsole. I don't know if I'd call them bulky, but it is just a little bit thicker in that shot in that spot for sure. But looking at some of the specifics, they do work the run logo into the tongue. And you know, I think that air zoom patch on the midsole is actually a pretty nice look. You're gonna get a little bit of a mismatching setup kind of running up the back of the shoe. And with these being at the top, Nike is now hit on all three heights for a shoe within this greater than line. So you're gonna have the GT jump, which is gonna be a high top. These runs are more of a mid top design. And then of course the GT cut was a low design. So, you know, I thought it was cool to kind of give consumers the option to kind of choose what shoe height, you know, they maybe prefer to play in. And, you know, I really don't think Nike did a bad job designing any of these GT shoes. They all came out pretty solid. So now looking at the materials and more of the performance side for this GT run and starting off with the cushioning, I first wanted to point out that each shoe in this Greater Than series was kind of geared for a different style of play, which I thought was a really cool concept. So the GT Jump kind of focuses more of your vertical and like your impact protection. The GT Cut model was designed to kind of keep you low to the ground for those like cutting and like change of direction quickly movements. And then for the GT run here, these are more for like your energy return and like the whole running aspect. So similar to the GT Cut, you are going to have some react technology in that midsole it's not going to be quite as soft as the other two models to play in but you still have a multi-layered cushioning setup with a four foot zoom air strobe unit and then you also have a four foot zoom air unit and it's just not quite as noticeable on these shoes you don't feel the cushioning quite as much but it still does play pretty high off the ground just because of how thick that midsole is like i was just mentioning you know it just doesn't really measure up to the other two gt shoes that well but you know just as far as other basketball shoes in general it's still going to be way above average so looking at the materials and the support, these are going to have a closer feel to the GT Jump than they are going to be for the cut, just as far as what was used to make up this design. So it is still going to be a little bit different. These have a two layered upper, which is made to be lightweight and breathable. And you know, part of the upper is even see through. So you know that these will definitely give you that. And you're going to have a combination of like mesh and textured print kind of being used within that design. And you know, I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. And those little beads that are on the upper are actually there for like some added protection and durability, which is obviously going to be nice. And for as thin as the upper material is, it does feel pretty secure, but you know, it still hasn't felt the best as far as comfort because the upper material, it can kind of crease in some weird places whenever you kind of bend your shoe. It just hasn't bothered me in every playing time that I use these, but I did notice it on a few occasions. So I thought it might be worth it to mention, but there just aren't any pieces on this shoe to really keep your foot within that design as well, just to kind of add to the support but I'd maybe want that with the design that has an upper this thin and might give you a more of a secure feel. But you know, in general, these still play pretty well. 
So to finish off with traction, these probably got the most unique setup of the three GT shoes. They just don't really have a set pattern with arrows or anything like those other models. On this, you're gonna get more of like some curved lines all throughout the outsole. And you know, those grooves are pretty deep too. And I don't have a lot to complain about or praise for the GT run. They just don't have as sticky of a feel, but they still don't have like any major blem blemishes to go with, you know, as far as the traction. If anything, the traction is like a little bit better than the support on this shoe. And sometimes that makes me nervous whenever you have a basketball shoe like that, because you don't want to be stopping faster than the shoe can really handle. I don't think it's a big enough gap where that's going to be an issue on the GT run though. I mean, I felt fine so far, but to finish off with sizing, I did go true to size and that works for both the length and the width on these shoes. It's a pretty standard fit as far as I can feel, but you know, overall there isn't like a bad shoe that was released from that Nike greater than line, but you know, these probably are my least favorite of the three. You know, on their own, they play really well, but whenever you get into comparing them, you know, they just don't stack up quite as well as some of the other shoes in most of the areas. But, you know, consider the price too. These are still definitely on the higher side at $175, but the GT run is still a solid performer. So if you're interested in buying these shoes and you wanna support our channel, we do have an affiliate link in the description that gives us a little commission that just goes back into reviewing more shoes. So, I mean, feel free to check that out. But that wraps up this performance review. Feel free to leave a comment below if you like this video or just let us know any other shoes you may want us to check out. But until next review, I'm Landon from Shoewear. Peace.